Hi, welcome to the 3D Pendant. As you know from working with 3D pens, the texture of the pen strokes shows. Sometimes you want it to show and look kind of rugged, and sometimes you would prefer it to look more finished, depending on the project. Now, if you want to get wrinkles out of something, the obvious choice is to iron it. Let's look at the how and why, and keep in mind this has been tested for PLA only. Let's look at some of the reasons to iron, and talk about the details of the ironing technique as we go through them. The first and most obvious reason is getting rid of the stringy texture. You protect your piece on both sides so it doesn't stick to the iron and set your temperature as hot as the iron will go. It is best to iron on a firm surface. I use a tile or a cutting board or a cork board to do this. Forget the ironing board, it's way too soft and you won't be able to apply the pressure once the plastic starts melting. Do both sides and you can even gently burnish it with some tool to help it get leveled. The more pressure you apply, the thinner the sheet will be, but you also get more distortion that way. Reason number two is controlling the amount of gloss or matte you want on your surface. Actually, mostly matte. The best gloss comes from baking it in the oven and there are a few of my baking videos in the description if you would like to try that. Ironing will get rid of the gloss if you don't want it and can also bring interesting texture to the surface. How matte it gets depends on what you use to protect it with. This is my new favorite surface to iron and bake on. Teflon coated sheets. They come in a box like this and they are made specifically for ironing and baking. They come in large sheets, easily cuttable with scissors. They stay flat, do not wrinkle easily, and they are porous enough to prevent most of the pitting. We will talk more about that later. Also, by the way, there are two kinds of these on the market, coated and uncoated. The coated kind is not so porous, so I stay away from it. Here is a sample ironed with the Teflon sheet. You will get a matte surface plus a bonus subtle texture of densely woven fabric from this one. Silicon baking liners work too and will retain some of the gloss. Plus it will take on the subtle texture of the baking mat. The setback of the silicone is that the non-porous surfaces tend to trap air pockets and produce a little bit of pitting here and there, which you don't get as much with the Teflon sheets. Parchment paper will give you the most matte surface and it is wildly available. Just make sure it's parchment and not just the wax paper. They are two different animals. I don't use it as much anymore because it tends to wrinkle with repeated use and those wrinkles imprint in the plastic. But it works if you can't find anything else. Just use a new piece every time. Here is a comparison of our finish control options. Reason number three. Ironing makes sheets that are thinner than anything you can produce with a pen alone especially with some additional burnishing. They can be as thin as paper, which means they will process as easily as paper. They will cut with scissors or exacto knife or certain punches. Having thin layers brings us to the ironing reason number four, fusing. Fusing can be done in two ways. 
you can fuse vertically by sandwiching the layers on top of each other. Having thin layers allows you to laminate multiple layers like you would glue collage elements. The design tends to spread a little with the heat, so make sure to plan for it. You can draw practically anything this way and achieve perfectly seamless blending of the layers and colors. Joining vertically will make the design show only on the top side of the sheet. If you want the pattern to show on both sides, you will have to fuse horizontally by ironing together adjoining layers, by layering them next to each other, instead of on top of each other. Now I have a perfectly good sheet with stripes on both sides of the piece. And I can just keep going. Oops! Here it was not fused all the way. But it doesn't matter, we will get one more chance to get it right on the next ironing. Here, the checkerboard is on both sides. You get the idea. Reason number five, forming. You can obviously iron only flat things. So how do you then make it 3D? Let's back up a little bit into the general ironing technique. When you iron any piece to get it flat, you have to heat it quite a bit until it melts. And if you try to check on it at that point, you will find that even with all these non-stick materials we just talked about, it has stuck to the ironing liner. Don't panic! The plastic tends to stick to all hot surfaces, but it will release as it cools. In fact, I usually speed up the cooling process by sticking it between two cold marble tiles. It releases in a few seconds, and the heavy tile keeps it from warping too. Now we can use this sticking feature to our advantage in forming. Let's say I need to form this piece into a round segment. I can make it soft again and wrap it around this tube as I would a piece of paper. I will protect it from the iron by a strip of Teflon sheet, which will also help me to pick it up and form it without sticking to my gloves or this paper tube. Plan carefully which side is going to be the outside of the tube, so you iron it to the correct side for forming. Definitely wear gloves for this one. Ready? Iron it only to the point where it sticks to the top liner, but not yet to the bottom one. Keep your tube handy. Pick it up, form it and hold it for a bit until it's cold enough to handle without gloves. Forming really needs a separate video because there are many ways you can do this. And you are done. Reason number six, prep for baking. I know you will ask, why should I iron it and then bake it? It's already smooth after ironing. But let's say you want to join it to another part. Like so. If you watched any of my baking videos, you hear me complaining that any tiny gaps in the pen surfaces will open into big cracks as the plastic shrinks a little during baking. So if you have a single color piece where the pattern won't matter, give it a quick seal before popping it in the oven. It 
will prevent any potential splits. Reason 7. Recycling leftovers. Do you happen to have one of these in your studio? Don't deny it. I know you do. All those ends too short to put back in pens, false starts and fails you were not able to part with yet. Again, wear gloves for this. First, just give it a gentle iron so it softens into spaghetti, but you can still pick it up without sticking to the liner. Then gather it in a ball and keep going until you get a sheet. The real fun with this starts when you use strategic color combinations. This will give you nice, organic, slightly random color blending to give your projects more color interest without needing to paint it later. For instance, if you want to paint fake stone texture, that would be a lot of work. It will be completely different on the other side. Sometimes it's hard to pick which you like better. Speaking of working with color, there are also several methods to iron more organized color patterns. If you layer your colors strategically, like for example make a grid of some kind and fill it with colors, Obviously, this will be very project specific, but whatever you do, the key is to be consistent about it. See, the two sides are already quite different. The side that touches the iron directly will distort more, so keep the side you want to use on the bottom. And move the iron as little as possible to avoid moving the colors and pattern around too much. So let's see what we've got. This side is completely smooth and looks quite melty. And our good side needs a trim around the edges but I'm quite pleased with it. So here are our nine reasons to iron but let's call it the first nine reasons. There are probably way more than that. Ironing is a very useful way of heat processing. But it is by no means the only way of smoothing 3D pen projects. Now, I was going to show you how to use ironing on a project. But that really should be another video. So stay tuned and before next time, go and make something.